Okay, so we're back talking with Svetlana Zalishuk from uh, Center UA in Ukraine. Um, here we are in Warsaw. That is the uh, uh, main soccer stadium in the background, actually. Um, Svetlana, talk to us a little bit about the, um, the way the Euromaidan protests arose and, and in particular, um, you know, the role of social media, the role of, uh, you know, people being connected to each other by Facebook or by text message. I mean, how much of this uh, movement um, was enabled uh, or powered uh, by technology? This movement actually started in the in Facebook, and no one could ever ever imagine that it would be such a massive uprising, such powerful uh, protest against uh, our authoritarian regime. And when on 21st of November, one journalist wrote at his Facebook that it's time to go to uh, the main square of Kiev and just to say that we don't agree with the politics of the government. Mm -hmm. And there were like 1,000 likes of that <laughs> post. Mm -hmm. And we said, okay, so let's go there, let's support him. And then all of a sudden we understood that thousands and thousands of people... Was he a very coming. famous journalist? He was a famous journalist mm -hmm. and he was trustworthy. And in Ukraine, journalists are most uh, second. First uh, is church is most trustworthy and then uh, media. Hmm. The, as uh, institutions, it's very trustworthy in Ukraine. Uh -huh. On the Yeah, and it's interesting, uh, to the contrary of other political institutions like parliament, government, police, army, and so on and so forth. Uh -huh. So he was a very powerful agent of influence, you know. And uh, then uh, people decided not to go from, from the streets. They stayed during the night. And all of a sudden they understood, okay, if they don't go, we have to help them because it was already cold, so we need some tea, tea we need some food, we need some clothes. And that's how the whole structure started to evolve. And a lot of volunteers came and said, okay, I'm ready to, to serve you with teas. And I brought some soup and I, right. I can bring you some clothes. So this is how it started. And then, as you know, Ukraine uh, was was one of the countries that TV channels belong to the oligarchs and all to oligarchs are, used to be the puppets of, of, of the president, former president Yanukovych. So we didn't have much of the channels to spread the messages and to spread our communication. So uh, social networks uh, defined, uh, well... The, the, the Does it, is everybody on the internet here in Ukraine? More, uh, approximately 50% of mm -hmm. people are on the internet mm -hmm. and uh, we have Facebook is approximately 3 million people out of uh, 46 million of Ukrainians mm -hmm. so it was pretty powerful like a small TV channel uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the same day, one guy just created this uh, page that's called Your Maidan. He came to us, to our organization, because we are pretty famous for doing new media, and said, "I need help. You know, I don't, I can't cope with all of the news and everything." So we created a small team, and then how it started. So we worked from that moment on. Uh, we worked 24/7 for last already three months, mm. and uh, in just several days, uh, this Facebook page uh, obtained the historically record uh, followers mm -hmm. and people who joined it and people mm -hmm. who started spread the messages and mm -hmm. self-organized through that uh, platform. Yes. And it's very important that uh, social networks became not only the channels of the communication because we couldn't talk to media, you know, because mm -hmm. there were not that much free media, but also it became a platform of finding, putting together needs and proposals. For example, if some said, I have five cars and I can serve for any uh, purposes you, you need, please contact me and this is my number. And we knew that, for example, as a moderator in that paper, that okay, this group that saw your Maidan, for example, that are helping uh, to people who are wounded or beaten in the streets, they need these cars to bring people from the streets to the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So we put this uh, together and right. it worked very well and then many other things like hundreds of needs that you can't even imagine in a peaceful right. time that they can emerge and uh, this is how it worked so I would say that social networks and it, it's also another point which is very interesting that in countries like European countries or even in the well yeah in uh, democratic countries mm -hmm. I think that social networks do not play that particular role because um, you have the whole diversity of free media uh, that can that can serve, that can be used. But in oppressed uh, societies, 
uh, with society where you don't have access, free access to media, they they are decisive uh, channels for communication. Yeah. So I want to ask you one more thing. The, the most, uh, I think, unique aspect of uh, the Maidan revolution, if you can call it that, um, similar in many ways to mass protest movements we've been seeing spreading all over the world from uh, you know, Egypt, Turkey, uh, the indignados in Europe, uh, Brazil, Occupy. Um, in all these places we see um, people who are unhappy about political and economic conditions in their country knitting themselves together through social networks and social media um, to take a square and hold it for a while. But only in, in uh, Kiev have we seen this phenomenon of the Sotny, of people who formed self-defense units uh, that were literally ready to take uh, much more physical violence um, and were much more disciplined about holding places. Uh, it was a unit of Sotny that took, for example, Yanukovych's palace um, and then didn't let it get looted, uh, which was very interesting. So what is this phenomenon of, of the Sotnia, and, and where does it come from, and how did it arise in, in, in this case here? Do you know the, the story? It's a very interesting phenomena in general, mm -hmm. and I think uh, we still have to describe it in details mm -hmm. in order to spread the message, spread the, the experience to other countries that are still uh, to to a, a price, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, and you're right. It was it was one of the most uh, one of the most well organized unit uh, that were ready to defend the whole protest uh, mm. in in the heart of of Kiev. And uh, Sotnya, the name itself, it um, uh, the etymology goes from pre from six, 16th century and uh, from Cossack time, so called, mm -hmm. uh, when this uh, uh, man uh, formed. Uh, it, it was the name of the military units during that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, this very authentic uh, word and uh, people uh, uh, let me just notice that it didn't emerge right in the very beginning of your Maidan for a couple of months I have to say we had this feeling that it's gonna be very peaceful protest and non a drop of blood mm -hmm. is gonna be uh, shed mm -hmm. you know uh, because we lived through one revolution already in 2005, it was Orange Revolution, where none was even beaten, you know, in the streets. So we believed, we, we are able to repeat this story, but this government uh, uh, turned out to be much more cruel and much more just ruthless, you know. In, uh, so um, at some point people understood that police uh, is not going to treat us as peaceful Protestants. So men who were ready to defend the whole protest, the, your, our Euromaidan, they formed these units, so-called self-defense units, and they, uh, they, were, they had this proof bullet, bullet uh, vests, they had these helmets, uh, they had some... Uh, Just a short announcement, everybody that wants to use SSH or any other Small service than <laughs> HTTP, now, We're the, at a now the ports here. are unblocked on the Wi-Fi, but you have to use the Wi-Fi for net network, okay? It will not work on any other network, the Wi-Fi for net network now has all the ports unblocked and you can use, wi uh, you can use SSH or whatever to your heart's content. Cheers. I hope these guys will uh, will come up with good ideas for next protests in other countries. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So coming back to the uh, Sotnias, uh, we, we believe that. Uh, so yes, they formed at some point these uh, units, and they just took this responsibility to protect the protests on the perimeter of of the streets where we were standing, and uh, uh, they protected us during the nights, especially when right. police was people welcomed them. Oh yes, because you know, uh, once again, it was not specially trained. M most of them were not specially trained sportsmen or uh, I don't know, people from army or whatever. These were activists, journalists, sometimes professors, artists, musicians, uh -huh. and so on. It was just men who decided, okay, was this all is men? my role. Not always. There were some women. Of course, men didn't allow women to come come mm -hmm. there, but mm -hmm. still uh, they were there. And I mean. 
Uh, I was also there during these nights when they killed people and uh, it 